Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to a day of prayers morning Bible study. My name is Layla and we're so happy to have you here with us. But before we get into the word, we're going to take a moment and pray. Lord, we thank you for today, Lord, and we thank you for giving us brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, Lord, that are after your own heart, Lord, that will help us to become more like you, Lord, that to draw us near you, Lord, that they train us, Lord, that they equip us and that they Help us and walk with us along that path, Lord. We thank you for the joy and the laughter that you've placed in our lives, Lord, that you have put these beautiful creations on the earth for our enjoyment, Lord, and for your glory. We thank you for the good weather that we've been enjoying, and we thank you for helping us with things such as work and school, Lord. We ask that you'll minister to us this morning as we spend time in your presence, Lord, and show us what you have for us. And we thank you for doing so, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. So glad to have you with us as we dive into the Word and our study in the book of James. We are in chapter 2 this morning, but this morning we are moving forward and we'll be covering verses 20 through 26. So, could I get a volunteer to read that section of Scripture, please? I will. All right, promise. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham my father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith is made perfect, and the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God, and and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that man is justified by works, and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot ju- also justified by works when she received the messen? Wait, no, yes, mm-hmm. when he- when she received the messengers and sent them away, sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So, as is our custom, the floor is now open. To give each of you the opportunity to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you and ask any questions that you have. So who'd like to begin? I will. All right, honey, honey. I wanted to just tie back to verse 19 um, really quickly and and Mm -hmm. bring this together. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? So when you bring those together... It, it really creates the picture of if you know that you're confessing that Jesus is Lord and Savior of your life, act like it. Act like it. Don't give yourself and your flesh opportunity to stand around dibbing and dabbling in things of unrighteousness and ungodly behavior. If you're claiming that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, then anything and everything in your life should reflect that. Does it mean that you're absolutely perfect? No, but we don't use the law of liberty as a vice for sin to go, okay, I'm just going to continue to sin because God will forgive me and he'll make it okay. And, um, you know, I'm just going to take the rest of my life to get this together, but I still want God to be fully committed to his part in my life and, Right. Then it's crickets on God's side when he's looking for your righteousness. When he's like, look at my servant. Is she or he doing what I asked him to do? And then the crickets are chirping. Say Loud no. as a summer night on a con- in a country. No. <laughs> Saying no. Right. <laughs> you know, that's not right. If you know that God is your God, if you know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then act like it. Because what difference is there between any human and a devil Demons know that there's no denying that not one of those devils denied Jesus Christ. They all cried out, "Lo, you're here. You're the Lord. You're the true God. Right. They cried out some version of that or rendition of that. You are Lord. Mm -hmm. But yet they did not serve him. Yet they did not obey him. Right. Yes. Yes. So, you know, his little zestiness that he's getting here and, you know, um, (laughs) (laughs) James, the Lord ministering through James is, is getting zesty. 
But also we need to understand that and stop making conveniences for our flesh to, to be disobedient, to be less than what we should be before our God. Yes, it is the grace of God that brings us and the mercy of God that brings us to the fullness of what he desires us to be. And the Holy Spirit will work, work with us in getting there. But it doesn't mean he wants us just laying there doing nothing. And there's no, no semblance of difference between looking at a demon's life and then looking at your life. The, you, whomever, the proverbial human being. I'm talking to myself as well because uh-huh. I don't make excuses for my flesh. Absolutely. And you can ask my family. They'll heal me going through the house. Get it, get yourself together, punch in my own gut so that I honor the Lord. Because it makes a difference, right? And yes, then, mommy. you know, he when he goes in talking about Abraham, we've kind of touched on that already. And Rahab, like Rahab didn't have any um, formal training in the things of God. And she mm-hmm. did what she knew to do. And God honored her for that. I'm not saying that God was using, uh, wanted her to lie per se, but that's all she had at the moment, right? To try to do what was right by God and use her faith the best that she could to help the purpose and the plan of God. And God respected her for that because he is a thoughts and determiner of the heart, right? His word Mm -hmm. does. He looks at what was the intention behind this? What was your, your motivation and what you were doing? That's all she knew to serve the Lord. She didn't necessarily know to listen to the Holy Spirit because he's got a million ways to not violate him in anything and still get the job mm-hmm. done. Right? Yes, mommy. Okay. And I don't have to try to figure out what that is, but I just know the character and the nature of the God who says, do not lie because not even a lie is going into heaven. Right? But yes. him also saying graciously, you don't know me. You haven't had formal training in how to be led by me, but you're doing the best you can. I'm going to work with you on that. And then I'm going to bring you up in the, the ways that you should go and we can keep moving forward in relationship. The Lord is looking for that rather than someone who's like, well, I'm not going to do anything. I just got saved. That's barely enough. Shh, shh. Go on about your business, God. Uh, I'll see you in heaven. The rest of the way, I'm going to do my own thing. The Lord's not interested in that. He wants a faithful heart to be committed to him and act like it. Enough. Again, back to faith and works, right? Mm-hmm. Works demonstrate the faith. Right? Mm-hmm. What did the Lord through the Apostle Paul say? But you are our epistle. You're our mm-hmm. testimony. You're our, you're our letters. Or you're not our testimony, but you're our letters read by all. Mm-hmm. It's not just about what you say. It's about also about what you do, how you're living. Are you living in a way that reflects Christ's character, nature, and attributes that demonstrates to the world that you are conformed or being conformed to the Mm -hmm. image of Jesus, the Christ, our Lord and Savior? Or are you in opposition? Because that speaks volumes, right? Mm -hmm. More so than the words coming out of someone's mouth sometimes. So what is that, right? Um, The Lord says it this way. These people honor me, honors me with their lips, but their hearts far from me. Mm -hmm. And then in Revelation, how did they overcome? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives unto death. Okay, which we, as we covered in the previous episode, that's pretty much everybody listed in the Heroes of Faith chapter, Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11. They did not love their lives even to death. They trusted the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even when it was their turn to go. Like, oh no, (laughs) you know, uh, Joseph, no, take my bones out of here, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we're not even leaving the natural, like... Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm I'm fully trusting in the Lord, Amen. even if I'm not going to be around. He believed the Lord. That's it. And verse 26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. If anybody has had someone pass on in their lifetime, you, you know this uh, reference deeper than you think. Mm-hmm. When that person is alive, when their spirit and their soul are in that body, there's life, there's animation. Amen. And there's movement. There's legal movement as well on the earth. They're, they have a legal right to operate here. That person looks totally different than when their body has, is the spirit and the soul has left the body. Mm-hmm. And just that, that carcass, that tent is left. There's no life in it. It doesn't even look like the same person. There's no movement. There's no activity. It's a shell. And so what he's saying is don't be an empty shell of what you're supposed to be. Be full of life. Filled with the life of God and doing and being what he's asked you to do and be. God wasn't like, hey, I love you guys down there, down there, down there, down there. How you doing down there, down there? I sure hope you make it. 
make it, make it. No, he was active in his faith. He prepared a body for his only begotten son, right? And yes, gave a, a journey and a mission to that only begotten son to come into this world and to live a sinless life, a spotless and a blameless life, to be uh, brutalized for us, to carry our the penalty and the cost for our sins and be chastised so that we would have the peace of God and then die on the cross and be raised again. Right. So he put he put action behind his love behind his desire, behind his faith that we would be reconciled. He didn't just like, man, ooh, hope they figure it out. Holy Spirit, nudge, nudge. Jesus, nudge, nudge. Hope they figure it out down there. No, he put together appropriate actions to make sure we would be reconciled, right? So likewise, our reasonable service of worship, as you mentioned in the last episode, is to do whatever is pleasing to the Lord, Right? Yes, mommy. Abraham did not come to the point of offering Isaac until it was the appointed time by the father. He didn't jump up there and try to offer. I mean, like he kind of he kind of verbalized, take Ishmael instead, but he wasn't holding the sword over Ishmael. <laughs> going, I'm gonna sacrifice him, Lord. E, 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 e. No, he did not do that until it was the appointed time. Uh, Rahab wasn't hiding people in bushels just pulling people out of the neighborhood and hide them in bushels on her, her rooftop and sending them out and running away and, and doing this vain repetition. She did what she knew was right to do what the Lord was prompting her as best as she could understand in the moment to honor the Lord. Mm -hmm. So likewise, we're not just doing vain things saying, whoo, hopefully it'll be good enough for you. One of these you'll take Lord. No, but it's, it's purposeful action. It's meaningful movement. And faith-filled action before the Lord. We believe what the Lord says to us. Um, I think as Isaiah says, who will believe the report of the Lord? And also says it in mm -hmm. Romans. We, re we believe what God says to us, written in his word and as he moves in our heart by the Holy Spirit. And then we obey whatever it is that he's asking us to obey. Uh, go ahead, my love. Uh, I'll give you another example just for something else that you, you had brought up about even when we, we leave this earth, right? Our mm -hmm. spirit and our soul are gone and just the bodies left. Well, what about Elisha? Elisha then died mm -hmm. and they put his bones in the tomb and then there was another prophet and as soon as there or another individual and they mm -hmm. threw his bones onto the, in the tomb with Elisha and Elisha's bones. Mm -hmm. And even though his spirit and his soul had gone, mm -hmm. gone to home of the Lord, mm -hmm. right? There was still life in them because of the faith that was in them. The power of God. That's what I'm saying. Yes, was in those bones, and so when someone else touched those bones, it still had their body. They came fully back intact. to life. They they stood up and said, "Ooh!" So the healing power of God, the mm -hmm. miracle working power of God that Elisha had been saturated with throughout his lifetime was still in his bones. So amen. that when someone else fell on their need and healing, they received it. Amen. Amen. Shouldn't it be that way with us? Glory to God. Right? Is is that not? Uh, I'll say an extension if you will, of, of faith and works yeah. or works demonstrating your faith to the whole world. Yes. And so for Elisha's case, he wasn't actively there going, get up, get up. You know, exactly. his bones weren't necessarily speaking anything, but the life that he lived before the Lord prior to that mm -hmm. paved the way for his bones to absorb and capture, hold within them, the power, the life-giving power of God, so that when even it was needed, and he had long gone on, because if there's only bones left, there's been sufficient deterioration. That means the, the skin, the blood, blood vessels, the, the muscles, all and all that stuff are gone. It's just the bones laying there. Even that, his obedience and the life he lived well beyond when this person touched him was sufficient for God to still continue to use him long after he was off mm -hmm. the earth. And he didn't have any specific will or concern about it because when he's in glory and or waiting in abraham's bosom for to go into glory he's not caring about what's happening <laughs> on the earth right and so the lord was able to use that pre-sown obedience mm. that lifetime of obedience even though the connection point came much later so how much more so should we be diligent about our obedience to the lord oh may look go ahead sweetheart something else that i wanted to mention Marvin, that i like that you you brought up about um, Abraham and Rahab, and you 
look back at the lineage. Abraham was not a Jew. He was a Chaldean. He was a Babylonian. Mm-hmm. Oh. He worshipped stars and the sun. He and came the moon from a background and... of it. He ceased to do that, but that Clearly. was how he was raised. Sure. Correct. Jer- uh, Rahab was from Jericho. They practiced passing their sons and daughters through the fire to Moloch. You can even bring up Ruth. She was a Moabite. She was part of the people that Balaam used to try to trick the people of Is- the children of Israel in the wilderness through prostitution and serving the Baals. So mm-hmm. all three of them had to completely sever their con- their former connection to sin to pass mm-hmm. over into faith. And it shows that Jesus again isn't a respecter. He doesn't go well. You're of this nationality. Mm, can't respect your faith. He he doesn't care if you have faith to believe him and you'll walk with him he'll take that and he's demonstrated that throughout um the entirety of the word how is it that obed edom was able and his descendants were able to serve before the lord next to the levites and the priests and obed edom was not an israelite the ark was able to stay in his house and he was blessed because of it because of his faith and his relationship with god so Faith transcends time and national boundaries and ethnicities and everything else mm-hmm. because this is this is a spiritual thing at work here, not not the the bicycle that you pedal to work every morning or the car you drive, depending on whatever it is that you have. It goes beyond that. So for mm-hmm. us, as you said, mommy, not making concessions and excuses for ourselves. Well, I came from this background of pagan worship. Okay, well. You, you you know, gave up the pagan worship, so get on with worshiping the, the true and living God and build that faith. You've already wasted and lost enough time with that. Let, that means you, you move even faster to build that reservoir of faith, and that's something you taught me as well, Mommy. Sure, I wasted a lot of time in my youth, but now I'm at this point. I'm still young. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. so everybody knows, but <laughs> just putting that out there. <laughs> yes, in, in my younger youth, when I was a younger youngster, I wasted a lot of time with games and frivolous thinking. But now I'm at a point in my life where I'm either going to put the pedal to the metal, or mm. the metal's going to pedal me. <laughs> and I've decided that I'm going to do pedal to the metal. So sure, I wasted a lot of time, but I still have that opportunity to make up for it. To to redeem the time. To redeem the time and mm-hmm. get where I need to go. So I'm in line and in step with the, the other things the Lord wants to do in my life and through me. So that's mm-hmm. the same thing for you. And, and I find it encouraging to read about Rahab and Ruth and Abraham. Rahab was um, Boaz's mother. So great, great great-grandmother King David, who's in the lineage of Christ, and so is Ruth. She mm-hmm. was Boaz's wife who gave birth to Obed, who had Jesse, who had David, and well, sure, they're important, but the really important one was Christ. Right, so. but each of these were nobodies in their own right. Correct. They were nobodies in their own right, and God made them somebody when they were ready and allowed themselves to be used by the Lord. He made them someone. And it also touches back to that partiality part of this, because when we look at um, the Holy Spirit ministering through Paul, there's no Jew nor Greek. There's no male nor female. Either you're a believer or, free. or you're not. Right? Yes, Either mommy. you're on God's side or you're not. And as you pointed out, each of these people, none of them were Jews. But all were significant. And God valued them enough to put them in the line of Christ Jesus. Right? Right? Yes, mommy. So that that partiality as well, it it attributes and it connects to, it's not just about if you've got money or not money. That's the connection with slave or free per se. Um, Money, no money, male nor female, Jew nor Greek. God doesn't care. He's looking for faith. Now he will apportion your role accordingly to your, if you're a male or a female, right? He didn't ask the men to carry and, and physically give birth to anyone. He asked them to be fathers. Um, and vice versa. But he's just saying, where's your faith? Yes, mommy. Come on with the come on. Get on with it. And um, the Apostle Paul says that when he was a child, he thought as a child. He behaved as a child. He acted and carried himself as a child. But when he became a man, he put away childish things. And that's a reference to his spiritual. I mean, he did this. He did that in the natural at some com- component. But we saw him as a grown man uh, completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> with his actions and behaviors. So the the more important and applicable reference is that when he became a spiritual man, he put to, he put away the childish, the spiritually childish things and the same with you and he did that so that he could redeem the time that had been wasted 
in um, things that were not according to the will and the plan of God, and that he could make the remaining time that he had on the earth as a, as effective as possible for the kingdom of God, which we saw him do that. He wrote that we have record of the majority of the new Testament and the days of his life were fully redeemed by the father. So as we're moving forward, let's just keep our faith in God. Let's give God something to work with and have something to show for it. Not vanity and emptiness, just an empty carcass laying there doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Use the faith that God has given you, but, and obey as you go, because that's the optimal effectiveness of your faith is to hear from God, be led by him and obey whatever he's telling you to do. Because isn't that how the father is glorified? Amen. Right? And Jesus keep growing up in him. Glorified the father by fulfilling all the works mm -hmm. that were there for him to do. Well, yes, because he loved him, mm -hmm. but that was demonstrated by his obedience, mm -hmm. love, faith, and his future hope in mm -hmm. the Lord. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments is what the Lord told us. So then clearly that was the same measure for him. He loved the father. So he kept the father's commandments. Amen. And look what all I'll say how the Lord was used mm -hmm. and, and the time that was redeemed. Amen. Now, Lord is willing and ready and able to do the same thing with you. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean, and me. yes, yeah. but all of us mm -hmm. who are willing to humble ourselves and submit to the Lord, Amen. demonstrating our love, faith, and hope in him through our obedience. Mm -hmm. So let's pause there for today. Uh, there's a lot in there. A lot of time for Holy Spirit to minister to each of you and, and for you to have time to search out the scriptures and to get the word written on the tablet of your heart. Amen. 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 All right. So can I get a volunteer to close this out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we thank you for the time of the word this morning. Lord, we thank you for showing us who you are, Lord, and your heart behind the matter, Lord. We thank you for giving us an opportunity and a chance to come to you with the faith that we have, Lord, to believe you, to trust you, and be able to be your sons and your daughters, Lord. We ask that you'll continue to help us to grow that faith, to exercise it, Lord, to build it up and strengthen it. Lord, we thank you for quickening our mortal bodies so that they're able to do everything you asked us to do. Here in the natural, Lord, we thank you for the sharpness of mind and the understanding heart. And we thank you for all the good things that you've blessed us with, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' amen. almighty name, amen. And amen. Oh, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, Take care and God bless you.